Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Vicki. Behind me is my interpretation of a mid-century hanging bar. This is my entry into the 2021 Fall Builders Challenge Furniture Flip. Now prior to the Furniture Flip starting, I saw this picture of this mid-century bar by a famous mid-century designer and I was just, I just loved it and I thought I need to recreate that. So that's what I decided to do for my entry in the Builders Challenge Furniture Flip. Come along as I show you how I did this. I'm starting with an old tabletop and a drawer that I had previously made into a rolling toy box for my grandsons, Tyler and Andrew, which they've now outgrown. The first step was to prep the tabletop. Here I'm removing the hardware from the bottom. It required a bit of coaxing to be removed, which I did with a pry bar with a little help from a rubber mallet. It eventually came free. Now, on to removing the wheels and cleaning up the drawer. I had to get rid of this cork as well. The parts that were glued down were really hard to remove, but eventually I just sanded them away. I sanded the back side of the tabletop to clean it up. I wanted a really smooth surface, so I covered the surface with wood filler. It goes on easily, sort of like frosting a cake. I let that dry and went back and sanded it smooth. The sides of the drawer needed to be flushed with the front edges. I found a wood scrap that was the thickness that I needed and cut the two pieces to size. Since I was working by myself and I'm not comfortable with a table saw, I cut the piece with a Dremel Saw Max. It did the trick. To attach the new side supports, I first covered the surface with glue, put the piece in place, made sure it was level with the sides and clamped it into place and then added a few brad nails. This entire project hinged on getting a perfect cut on the tabletop. Prior to cutting it in half, I primed the surface and painted it with deco art, gesso, and gray. To find the center of the circle, I drew a line across the bottom and then marked the center of this line. Working even numbers make this step easy. Then I laid the square on the line and drew another line perpendicular to the first line. I had previously cut out a circle out of paper in a first attempt to find the center. I didn't use this method, but did fold the paper circle in half to determine if the two-line method actually worked. And it did! For the actual cutting of the line, I had Steph come over to help. We are using the Makita track saw. We put the track in place, and then, holding our breath, we cut that circle in half. It worked! This tabletop is formica or plastic laminate over particle board. To prep the formica part, I first sanded and then coated the surface with Dixie Bell Slick Stick. This is a great product for painting over plastic laminate. The formica part of the tabletop will be the backside of the hanging bar. To add color, I'm doing a paint pouring finish using deco art paints on the interior bottom of the drawer. A full list of the colors I use can be found on our website. I let the paint dry for about two days before giving it an epoxy resin finish. I'm using bare paint in the color The Real Teal on the back side of the bar as well as on the drawer. With everything dry, it was time to fit the drawer to the tabletop and to mark the placement. Once I was happy with the placement, I marked the holes for the two piano hinges. I used a nail set to make an impression in the top as it was going to get more paint which would have covered up the pencil marks. Once the paint pouring was dry, I put it in the drawer to test the fit. I poured and spread wood glue in the bottom of the drawer and put the paint poured panel in place. We hardly ever use these seat clamps, but they were perfect for keeping the panel in place while I brad nailed from the back. Okay, now for the magic part. On to the transformation of the fronts. I wanted the first set of wood pieces to be equal distance from the center, so I drew a circle with a compass. Using wood ice cream spoons, deconstructed clothespins, and various sizes of wood circles, I created a starburst style design. I debated about handles, but decided in the end not to use them. I did pre-drill holes for them, which you can see on the back side of the finished doors. The pieces were secured with wood glue or hot glue. The next step involved liberal amounts of Mod Podge to secure the tissue paper. This is plain, ordinary white tissue paper, which I lightly crumpled before use. I watered down the Mod Podge just a bit and used a foam brush to apply it to the surface. 
The tissue paper was applied and using a fresh, dry foam brush was pressed lightly onto the wood pieces, creating wrinkles as I went. Any place where the tissue overlapped, I tore the edges as to not have a straight seam. The Mod Podge was allowed to dry to the touch. The tissue was easy to tear off in order to clean up the back side. While the front was drying, I did a pour of epoxy resin into the drawer bottom. A plastic scraper helped to move it around and a heat gun removed the air bubbles. After the first coat of Mod Podge was dry, I added a second coat. I added a bit of paint to the Mod Podge to make it easier to see where I had applied the second coat. It's at this point I made any repairs to the sides and the top. All that was left was to let it dry and then it was on to spray painting the tops and the sides. A bit of cardboard helped to keep the overspray off the bottom while I was spraying. After that was dry, I used black rub and buff on the circles and then silver rub and buff all over, hitting the high points of the wood pieces and the wrinkles. A little rub and buff goes a long way. Here's how I applied the black to the circles. I found putting a small amount on the bottom of a cup helped me to control how much I was using. To keep the doors closed, I'm using magnetic latches. They only came in white and black, so I'm giving them a bit of a rub and buff makeover in silver. With everything dry, it was time for assembly. First, the piano hinges were attached to the drawer. I also attached the drawer part of the French cleat to the back before assembling the entire thing. Test time! I wanted to be sure this hung at eye level before moving on to adding the doors. Success! The piano hinges were attached to the doors. I really could have used an extra set of hands on this part. I was happy the doors lined up, so it was time to attach the latches. Oh, and I left my grandson's names made from Scrabble tiles on the finished piece. I covered up the tiles with Vaseline before I painted them so once it dried, it just wiped right off. Once the latches were in place, I called stuff over to my house to help lift it into place. It was a little tricky, but we got it to sit level and secure. And here it is in place! It has a colorful space to house glassware and other treasures. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. It's right at home with the rest of my mid-century decor. It's all dark and moody from the front, but then from the side, you can peek at that same color that once the doors are open, you see inside. It's a little visual surprise. What we learned. I learned a lot about applying that rub and buff. It's really hard to control the amount that you get on the t-shirt that you're applying it with. And I found that if I just apply it first to something that has a high point, like the edge of the clothespins, that took off most of it, and then I was able to apply it to the flat surface. Now, if you apply it to the flat surface first, you're gonna end up probably having too much, and that rub and buff does not go away. <laughs> I really like to do challenge, and I really like to do this builder's flip challenge, and I like it because there's a set of rules, and you have to stay within those rules, and there's a time limit, so I'm really motivated to get the project done. That's why I decided to go ahead and do this project within the constraints of those rules and the time limit. Now the Builder's Challenge is open to anyone and we'll put a link below. It's a great way to show off your creativity. Thanks for joining us and if you enjoyed this video, you can follow us at motherdaughterprojects.com for more videos and tutorials. Thanks for joining us, bye.